Good. The Jack Benny Program. With Jack's special guest, Bob Hope. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Before I get started, I want to thank the American Tailors Association for this award that they gave me last week, selecting me as the best-dressed male performer in television. And Rochester, Rochester said I was silly buying Adolf Manju's old clothes. <laughs> and you know, speaking of clothes, my father once told me a secret about being well-dressed. I remember one day he came, I was eight years old at the time, you see, and my dad came up to me and he said, Mr. Benny? Uh, <laughs> my father called me Mr. Benny then. I guess it's because he was working for me, you see? <laughs> Anyway, he said to me, you know, you don't need a lot of clothes. If you have one suit and a nice shine on your shoes, you'll always be as well-dressed as your neighbors. And, you know, he was right. For years, for years, with that one suit, I was as well-dressed as any of our neighbors. Of course, I had to be careful where I lived. <laughs> as the suit got older, I was getting into some pretty sloppy neighborhood. <laughs> I finally said, the heck with it. I bought another suit and moved to Beverly Hills. And I must say that living, living in Beverly Hills, ladies and gentlemen, is something that you don't have to Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you, Rickety Nelson. <laughs> Nelson? <laughs> Bob, for heaven's sakes, you're not supposed to come on for five minutes yet. You know, I was right in the middle of my monologue. Yeah, that's why I came out. <laughs> get off the stage. I'll hold him till you can get out of the building. <laughs> Look, Bob. <laughs> Quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear about the goat who fell in love with Mitch Miller? <laughs> or the rumor that Ben Casey isn't really a surgeon? If he could cut something, he'd do something about Dr. Zorba's hair. <laughs> Boy, you really cooled him off, didn't you? <laughs> Bob, listen to me. If you'd have done what I asked you to and come in my dressing room before the show, you'd have known that you weren't supposed to come out here until I introduced you. Jack, I tried to get into your dressing room, but I didn't have a nickel. <laughs> As I came down the hall, some people stopped me. I couldn't get away from them. They wanted to know how a comedian works, huh? how he commands the attention of the audience, and how he gets big laughs. Oh, tourists? No, your producer, your director, and your writer. <laughs> well, I've got news for you, Bob. They'll be tourists tomorrow. <laughs> how can you fire them? They're your relatives. <laughs> Not for long. I'm having my blood changed in the morning. <laughs> that should take about two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I have another nice little joke Wait here. Wait a Bob. Huh? Why do you always look over there? This is well, what those ushers are. Well, I'm working to the ushers. I like to play the men in uniform. <laughs> I, uh... Look, Bob. What do you think happened on the way to the bomb? Look, Bob. Here I go. Huh? Do me a favor, will you? Will you get off the stage and let me introduce you like I was supposed to? Well, you know, I, you know, let's get everything... I wanted to get started right. Yeah, but I hate to turn my back on this audience, but I'll... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present my guest star, Mr. Bob Hope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very 
very much, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Adolf Manchu. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear the rumor that Mitch Miller doesn't have a beard? It's really a long, fuzzy tongue. <laughs> Wait a minute, you just did a Mitch Miller joke two minutes ago. You mean we got the same audience? <laughs> yes, and I'd like to keep him for at least another 25 minutes. You'd like to keep him for 25 minutes? Yes. Okay, I'll get your balloons and my fans and I'll be right back. <laughs> wow, come back here. You know, you don't have to keep running on and off the stage. You're on my show now. I work at a much slower pace. You certainly do. It took you 68 years to become 39. <laughs> And believe me, Bob, it wouldn't hurt either of us to slow down. As a matter of fact, I've been gradually tapering off on all of my activities. Last week, even though I hated to do it, I cut out my favorite sport. You mean you gave up knitting? <laughs> Not entirely, but I'm staying away from Argyle. <laughs> But, Bob, I'm, I'm serious. You know, you still think you're a kid. You push yourself too hard. Every day you're out on that golf course. Well, what's the difference? I walk 18 holes. You walked 18 banks. <laughs> well... And your bag is heavier than mine. <laughs> She's got the only caddy with a machine gun. <laughs> Look, Bob, stop being silly and listen to me, will you? Jack, I've been listening to you. But have you ever stopped to think that maybe the reason you're, you're slowing down is because you're not getting enough sleep? Gee, that could be at that. You know that uh, a day before yesterday, I only slept six hours. Yesterday, I slept only four hours. Remember, three days ago, I only slept five hours. Well, there you are, Jack. You're not getting enough sleep at night. Oh, at night, I get eight hours. <laughs> I'm talking about the afternoon. <laughs> this kid not only gets sleep, he's getting all the jokes, too. <laughs> kid? Call me kid. <laughs> That one word did more for him than Medicare. <laughs> now, Jack, I appreciate your efforts to get me to take it easy, and I know you're sincere because, after all, we've been good friends for years. Some friends. You made about 20 road pictures, the road to Morocco, the road to Singapore, the road to Hong Kong. If we're such good friends, why didn't you make some of those road pictures with me instead of Bing Crosby? I have to make them with Bing. He owns all the roads. <laughs> Jack, I'll make you a promise. The next time we make a road picture, you can be in it. Gee, that's wonderful. You can be one of the soft shoulders. <laughs> Bob, anything. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but you know, Bob, while we've been talking, it just occurred to me how similar our careers have been. After all, we both did, you know, we both made quite a few pictures. That's right. And we both were in radio for a long time. That's true. We both went all over the world entertaining troops. Yes, but I did it free. <laughs> Can I help if the boys threw money up on the stage? <laughs> you were the only violinist in the USO who worked with a tin cup. <laughs> you sorry you said that? Yeah. <laughs> Jack, you're absolutely right. Our careers have almost paralleled each other. I, get I guess that's because we started out together. Yeah. I'll bet very few people here in the audience, or at home, know that you and I were once a team in vaudeville, that we did an act together. I didn't know it till rehearsal today. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not sorry for. We did. <laughs> we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, and things were pretty tough for us then. We used to do a split week here, a split week there. Yeah, but those were the days. The days of Gallagher and Sheen, Pat Rooney, Block and Sully, Smith and Dale. Yes, oh, Block and, and those Sully. corny quartet. Yeah. Oh, boy. I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old Dad. She was a pearl and the only girl that Daddy ever had. Ever had. Oh, yes, a good old-fashioned girl with heart so true. One who loves nobody else but you. I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. I'm sorry, I can't interrupt Mr. Weber now. He's in his office talking to a client. 
Could you call back later? Thanks. I've been waiting here for over an hour. I know, but you're not the only actor that Mr. Weber handled. So you'll just have to wait. Oh, all right. <laughs> Look, would you stop that juggling in here? It's very disturbing. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> like to see Mr. Weber, please. Do you have an appointment? What do you mean, appointment? We're Benny and Hope. Benny and Hope? Yeah. Don't you recognize us? Why? Is there a reward? <laughs> you don't understand, girly. We do a vaudeville act. Really? Which one throws the fish? <laughs> oh, that's clever. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. That figures. <laughs> Look, we want to see... Me. Excuse me, please. Weber Theatrical Agency. What? You say you have a bird that talks? That's wonderful. Bring it in. What's unusual about a bird that talks? This is a chicken. <laughs> now, what did you want? We want to see Mr. Weber. Well, first I'll have to have some information. What's the name of your act again? Hope and Benny. I thought you said Benny and Hope. At 2 o'clock, our billing changes. Well, what kind of an act do you do? Oh, we do violin, snappy patter, and soft shoe. Well, uh, where have you played? Oh, we played all over. Just tell her the important ones. Well, we played a week in Storm Lake, Iowa. <laughs> a week in Mountain Home, Nebraska. And three days in Greenleaf, New Mexico. And a week right here at the Palace in New York. Oh! Storm Lake, Mountain Home, Greenleaf, and the Palace. Well, at least you worked your way up. No, we played the Palace first. <laughs> Still haven't got it out of the curtains. Mr. Weber's busy with a client right now. That's a good luck on your tour. Oh, he's through now. Just a minute. Now, uh, if there's anything you want to call me about, I'll be in the office all afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Weber. <laughs> You see what I just saw? Yeah. Imagine a coat with a belt in the back. <laughs> hey, honey, what was that fellow's name? Just plain Bill. <laughs> I just thought of something. See? Let's go with the ball game tonight. There's a double header. <laughs> kind of stuff that got us into Storm Lake. Mr. Weber? Yes? There's a couple of gentlemen here to see you. Send them right in. Whoops. At 2 o'clock, our billing changed. <laughs> Sit down. How are you? Uh, now, what can I do for you? Mr. Weber, I'm Jack Benny. This is Bob Hope. That's right, Mr. Weber. You booked our acting at the palace seven years ago. Oh, yes, I remember. Say, what business are you boys in now? 
What business are we in? Bob, show them our review. The one we got in Storm Lake, Iowa. Is he kidding? Yeah. <laughs> show them. Hey, those argyles you knitted for me are beautiful. <laughs> there you are, Mr. Weber. Look at it. You know, the reason we came up here to see you, we feel you're the only agent who should book us. Please, fellas. Our new act is sensational. At least give us a chance. Yeah, all we need is a break. I gave you a break when I put you in Lowe's Flatbush. Yeah, some break. They open with Fink's mules, then Major Doty's dogs, then Manny's monkeys, and Power's elephants. So what? So what? By the time we got on the stage, we had to come out dressed in a horse's costume. Oh? Who did you boys get to play the front end? <laughs> but he had this in his back pocket. <laughs> now, come on, on a cigar. That in his back pocket. <laughs> Look, boys, I'm sorry. I'm a very busy man. Why don't you come back some other time? Oh, it's, excuse me, come in. Mr. Weber. I want you to hear this new song I did. It's gigantic. It's colossal. It's stupendous. Ink. I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. He's not oh, dead. What you did to me? You wrote me. I'm mortified. <laughs> uh, he was lucky. He pulled your nose through the keyhole. <laughs> now look, what yeah. 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 Oh, I forgot you had a line there. Now look, at <laughs> now look, Mr. Weber. Why don't you give us a break? I want you to listen to our act. It'll only take a few seconds. All right, if you insist, but make it fast, will you please? Okay, I'm gonna hit your violin. We'll right. murder him right here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ready? Go, Jack. Have you heard that they're making women's bathing suits out of spun glass? Women's bathing suits out of spun glass? Well, that's worth looking into. So do I. In fact, music saved my uncle's life. Really? How did music save your uncle's life? They played the Star Spangled Banner as he sat in the electric chair. <laughs> I want you to meet my new girl. I call her well enough. Why do you call your new girl well enough? Because I want the boys to leave well enough alone. <laughs> oh, turn up the gas, Mother. We're cooking to die. <laughs> Mr. Weber, what did you think of it? <laughs> I'm going to count up to ten, and good luck to both of you. <laughs> and if 
you miss each other, I hope you get me. Wait a minute. Our act can't be that bad. Can't you book us somewhere? Look, boys, actually, I've got nothing open for a double. Hey, wait a minute. Have either of you ever thought of doing a single? What? And break up our act? Why, we've been together for years. You can't split Benny and Hope. Why, that would be ridiculous. We're more than partners. We're pals. We're buddies. We're friends. Side Why? by side. <laughs> if we... If we rather star than have anything come between us. Well, that's a shame, boys. The only thing I've got open is a single in Akron. Pays 15 bucks a week. I'll take it. <laughs> but Jack, what about the team, the partners, the friends, the buddies? Look, Bob, I gotta watch out for myself. I'm not getting any older. I mean, young. <laughs> Which way are you going to go? <laughs> the way I've always been going. <laughs> Look, there's no use arguing about it. Take it or leave it. That's right. I'll take it for $14. I'll take it. Listen, rather than you hire this no-talented wage cutter, I'll take it for $10. I'll take it for eight. I'll take it for five. I'll take it for three. I'll take it for nothing. So will I. You will? For nothing? It's a deal. Congratulations, boys. You opened Tuesday in Akron with a talking chicken. <laughs> Jack, did you hear that? We're working. Bye. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. But first... Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Bob and I weren't really a team involved. We just made that whole thing up. <laughs> and how'd you like that act we did, though? The only thing that could... Honest! <laughs> the only thing that would have been worse was if Hope played the violin and I did the dance. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad he was with us. And here he is again, Bob Hope. <laughs> and Robert, Robert, now I want to tell you something. Thank you so very much <laughs> for being on my show. You really made it glow. And I'm especially happy that you didn't ask for dough. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Jack, I must say to you, I'm always glad to do a guest shot here with you. As far as league or tender goes, tomorrow I will sue. <laughs> no, don't thank me so much. <laughs> Man. Be the time, guesses. And only one thing I requested. It's something that my wife suggested. Forget manju suits. In my mind, they're buttes. Thanks to the audience. You were so nice, you know, for sitting through my show. When doors are locked and exits blocked, where else they gonna go? Good night, folks. I'll be seeing you soon. trying to give away the car here at TV 20 and so far no takers because some people who were spotted weren't watching. Don't let that happen to you. Keep that set on TV 20 as much as possible. The TV 20 late night movie just an hour away but first Perry Mason cracks another case that's coming up next on TV 20.